You're listening to Sin, and I'm Dominic, and I'm joined today with um, Clint of I Said the Sparrow. Hello. And Dave of Cupid Falls. Hey. Awesome stuff. There are two Perth bands that are actually pl- uh, sort of doing a double bill March Mayhem tour, playing a slew of dates along the East Coast, uh, specifically tomorrow night, uh, Friday the 7th, at the Power Nightclub, and then an all ages at Lilydale at the Bridge Builders on on the 9th. How are you guys going? <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, I'm, pre- I'm pretty Yeah, yeah, we're, we're good. How are you, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. We're, we're just super excited to head over tomorrow night, which would be awesome. Firstly, uh, I suppose I'll, I'll talk to you, Clint. You, the debut album, Death Pop, came out end of last year. It, it's not the mighty Death Pop, which is an insane clown posse record. It's, it's just Death Pop <laughs> on its own. It's a, it's a pretty wild album. There's a lot of, like, you, you genre hop a bit around on the, on the album. Uh, what sort of influences were on that album? Well, we've all come from, like, different musical backgrounds, um... Me and Sean primarily are heavily into like um, bands like Orgy, Marilyn Manson, um, In Excess, stuff like that. And uh, Jace is probably the most legit musician out of the whole band. He's into like The Deer Hunter and Alex is on Fire and all the stuff like that. And um, Tristan just looks good, so he just does <laughs> his job. And um, the album like came together pretty interestingly. Yeah, we just had a bunch of songs and even though like uh, the consistency probably isn't there on the whole album, every song is just like a different journey for us personally, mm-hmm. and uh, that's just what we've laid down this time. And uh, trying to trying to define our sound, I guess, is like either you know like a pop rock band or something like that. So yeah, but we're happy with the way it turned out, and um, we've had a really positive response to it. Yeah, that was that was basically that album. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and on the flip side, uh, Dave. The Cupid Falls debut, Bayview, doesn't come out until later on this year. Do you have a date for it to be uh, released? Is there? I saw that you might be announcing um, dates for the album release tour. Uh, well, actually, what we're going to do is we're actually going to release it uh, in physical copies first on this tour. So it's going to be available for purchase from uh, Friday night at PAL. Oh. Uh, and then we're going to do, so we're going to make it available first in physical copies for everyone on the East Coast. And then we're going to bring it back in Perth uh, and launch it locally and then on, on iTunes and Amazon and online as well. Oh, exciting, exciting stuff. So like, a, like an extra reason to get to the shows. That's it, yeah. So basically everyone on the East Coast is going to have first dibs on the album. It's actually, the physical copy is actually getting shipped straight to Melbourne uh, to meet up with us when we land. So, yeah, if, if, if everyone wants to come down and pick up a copy of the album, that'd be awesome. Oh, nailed it. Awesome stuff. When it came to recording this one, you recorded the you know, the EP in um, Sydney. Uh, uh, was that uh, the last year or the year before? Two years before. Two yeah, years that's before. Correct. Yeah. Where did you record Bayview? Did you go back to Sydney, or was it uh, perhaps done yeah. at home in Perth? Or uh, so basically, both both the EP Dancing in Distortion and the album were recorded uh, at Sunny True Love Studios, which is in Gosford, which mm. is just a bit out of Sydney. Um, and then we basically just, we just had such a good uh, response from our first EP, particularly on the production. Uh, so we decided basically, you know, we were so happy with the first EP that we'd just go back to Sunny and get him to do the album. And we're really happy with it. So we're, we're stoked we made that choice. Oh, that's awesome. You guys are actually, uh, like both bands, are pretty different in styles. Cupid Falls, more of a, um, definitely more of a metalcore influence, whereas uh, I Said the Sparrow is more uh, alternative rock or alternative metal. How did you guys actually sort of decide to, like, meet up and, and have this? Or how did you, well, firstly, how did you guys meet? And then secondly, what uh, brought you to do a double billing headliner tour uh, along the East Coast? When you, you and I met first, didn't we, when I was in when I was playing drums in my old band. Is that right? Yeah. And then we liked each other's photos on Tinder, and uh, <laughs> that's how we kind of pulled <laughs> yeah. up. The, re- the reason that we're doing a double bill tour was actually because we were going to get married in Canberra, but we can't do that anymore. So, oh, yeah. That is... Bloody Tony Abbott, yeah. I tell you, I hate that guy. That is a shame. That yeah, is a he, damn shame. He really ruined our fun. But basically, yeah. like, we've just been, we've been mates for a while, and we... Despite being like a you know a bit different in sound, like we always play a lot of shows together in Perth, and we both wanted to head over east at the same time. And Sparrow had gone over and done quite a few eighteen plus shows, and we'd we'd gone over and done quite a few all ages shows. So we thought that we could just combine it into an all ages and eighteen plus run together, 
um, which would be a lot of fun. A lot, and it's you know a lot of Perth bands that really make the trip over together. So we thought we'd you know do something different. Yeah, double down and and really like you get a, you get a, your money's worth for the show. It's good stuff. Yep. Yeah, that's it. I'll ask uh, I'll ask Clint first. Are there any um, since you've only you only recently released uh, Death Pop? So I imagine there's not much uh, stuff in writing for the future. But are there any sort of uh, big name producers or any sort of uh, like do you, are you going to record it at, like record your next album at a, perhaps a, a studio overseas or is there any any sort of bigger plans or, or bucket list producers to get for for I said the Sparrow? Um, yeah, definitely. We've um, we're actually writing a lot of new material because the album is like basically the, the stuff we wrote in the first years of being a band, um, and we're kind of like we we played it to death, you know. So. Uh, new material is being written at the moment, and we're hoping to either go somewhere overseas with a producer that I can't mention right now because it's Ooh. all hush hush. Um, but uh, we'll just see how that goes. I mean, it's all it's all a matter of um, you know financial backing and, and those kinds of things. But that shouldn't be a problem when the time comes. But uh, so now pre- the pre-production of the second album's already begun, and uh, hopefully we'll have that out at the start of next year. What's going on uh, in terms of writing at the moment, and probably. Uh, slight more cohesion of, of the sound which which will be sparrows like signature sound we're, we're working on so um yeah because basically the album is like almost two eps of like different material but we oh, just okay. it all together and said well here's an album some that's heavier some that's lighter some that's like really radio friendly so that's just what we're trying to do really so evolving the sound are you gonna play any new songs on the on the tour perhaps maybe um, there won't be any new songs. We uh, got a few surprises off our sleeves. I don't know if anyone would have heard of what we've done over over here in Perth, but um, we've got a couple of songs we're playing that aren't on the album, and uh, probably won't be on any future albums either. So <laughs> I'm, they're, I'm, like, they're like live exclusives, if you will. Yeah, I, I might have seen that sneaky Facebook post uh, earlier in the week. I, I I had a look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> And I'll actually uh, also ask the same sort of question uh, to Dave. Are, are there any sort of uh, big name producers that you guys are hoping to work with, like a bucket list sort of name or anything like that? I think like we're we're, we're still finding our sound as well as Sparrow. Like I I'd, I'd love to work with John Feldman. Like he's been my favorite uh, producer since I was a lot younger. Uh, so if he's you know if he's still d- doing that thing when we're ready to do another album then I would I would absolutely love to work with him because he's produced and founded and shaped the sound of pretty much all the bands that influenced me growing up so that would be a big one for me mm-hmm. but yeah at, at the moment like we've we've pretty much with our album we it's been you know two years worth of material that we've been writing and there's a, there's a few songs on the album that we literally only wrote right before recording it so we're still getting our heads around you know where we're going with the sound of the album so we're, we're probably going to be you know looking at quite a bit in the future before we you know knuckle down to do another another ep but we'll probably do a you know a single or two down the road just to keep people keep people interested i guess awesome stuff oh that's exciting um so you can catch the boys as i said at the top of the the interview um tomorrow night friday night the 7th uh at uh the pow pow nightclub and also on sunday uh this coming weekend at the all ages at uh all ages show at lilydale bridge builders and if you're elsewhere around the country um jump onto the facebook page there'll be a link there for other dates uh two in newcastle two in sydney one on the goldie um thanks for being on guys thank you dom not a problem thanks for having us that's all right and you're listening to sin (laughs) 